Hi everyone, my name's Tom, this is Watercolor Bites, and in this episode we're going to look at mixing lovely deep darks. Let's go. So deep, rich, velvety darks can often really make our watercolours pop and come to life. And they're also great fun to paint with, but it can be really easy, if we're not careful, to end up with kind of sludgy colours that just won't go as dark as we would like or we need. And then we kind of find we have to keep going over areas to get the depth of dark we want, and this can really lead to kind of overworked and dull look to the paint. But as always, with just a few pointers, it's not actually hard to get really beautiful, rich darks with life and luminosity to them. We're going to kick off with a look at a few colour possibilities, as well as what not to do, and then we're going to finish off looking at a few techniques with the paint itself to get our darks really working. And don't forget, if you have a personal preference for mixing darks yourself, or there's any other topics that you would like me to cover, just pop it into the comments below. Let's take a look. So obviously black is our shortest route to a dark. Simple. And we're going to talk at the end about different ways to actually create the dark and how to use the paint, but let's just look at the colours initially. It can have a bias towards being warm or cool, depending on which black you use, but generally it's quite flat, and once you start adding other colours to it, we, we tend to get these kind of... Can be, can be good, but we tend to get these kind of very grey versions of colours, and if we use too much black, our paintings can become... Um, very kind of sludgy and very grey and we tend to fall in the trap of using the black all the time whenever we want to darken colours and especially create deep darks. Nothing necessarily wrong with that in itself, but if we're after some slightly different colours, some slightly cleaner colours, then there's many other ways to create really rich darks. The great thing about black is though we can have a black and we can tint it with other colours. So the next way of creating a really lovely deep dark, which when I first started was probably the only way that I created deep darks, is to use a classic mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna. So we have a lovely warm blue and a very orangey brown. And it's the very orangey ready nature of the burnt sienna that kind of opposes the blue and they kind of cancel each other out and give us a nice deep dark. So if we take some of our ultramarine and then some of our burnt sienna mix them together. Look how that gives us a lovely rich dark. If it goes too brown and sludgy, then we put in more blue. If it goes too blue, then we put in more burnt sienna. And because we're only ever balancing two colours, it becomes a very simple way to mix a dark, really rich dark. That one's got a blue bias towards it, so if we want a slightly different colour, we can add more burnt sienna. Again, these aren't going very dark, but that's more because I've got a lot of water in the mix, so if we use less water and we're going to get onto paint consistency at the end, we can make some really rich darks like that. I tended to start moving away from that, and as, as always with these darks, and I'll keep talking about it, we can always tint these darks to be have a slightly different bias, so you might start with a, a neutral point of burnt sienna and ultramarine, get a neutral dark, and you can always drop a little bit of red into it as well. So that's a classic way to also create really rich darks. It works especially well when you're using less water and you want to create these kind of dry brush darks, so you want to drop um, very rich deep darks in there. So that's our kind of dry brush dark, really rich, lovely neutral dark. So great for that. I found on the whole that I didn't like using these so much when there's a little bit more water in there because they tend to make these kind of greyish colours, which I do really love greys, but I prefer mixing my greys by using three primaries, which again is something I'm going to talk about in a minute and do a much more extensive video on. But again, really classic place to start, and if you've got ultramarine and burnt sienna on your palette and you want a deep rich dark, especially when you're using less water and more pigment, really great way to mix a dark. But my favourite way to mix a dark and this is what I use all the time, and you may have heard me use phthalo blue if you've seen my other videos, is using a very cool blue. In my case, it's phthalo blue. And I love phthalo blue for creating deep, rich darks. And then that's very cool and greeny, so opposing to that, we use a very warm orangey red. In my case, it's pyrrole red. 
And let's mix these two together and then I'll talk about some alternatives. So let's get a deep rich dark here. Start with the thalo, really deep colour, very strong colour, but as soon as you add the very opposing reddy orange, or orangey red I should say, we get these lovely rich darks. So that's still got a lot of blue in it, so that tells me I just need to add a little bit more red to balance out the blue. And the more red I add, the more of a neutral dark we get. So it's a bit of a balancing act. There we go. Really beautiful, rich dark. This is my favourite way to create dark. And as before, and I'll talk about consistency of paint at the end, the less water, the more pigment, the more rich we get. For me, that gives a really lively, exciting, deep, rich dark. It will have a slight bias towards either being a bit more blue or a bit more red unless you really balance the two. And I'm gonna talk about balancing primaries in a sec. You can take any cool dark blue. So you could use indigo or Prussian. A really classic mix to create really deep rich darks would be taking Prussian or indigo and adding cadmium red. That's gonna give you a really, really deep rich dark as well. You could also use vermilion or naphthal red. The basic idea is you have a very dark, cool blue and a very orangey red. So what happens if we take the ultramarine, which is a much warmer blue, and then we add the same orangey red? We won't get the same level of dark. Yes, there's paint consistency to consider, but it will always go to being a slightly more lighter purple colour. It's very hard to get that kind of deep rich dark that you get there, and that's because the red and the warm blue are more interested in turning purple, whereas the red and the blue in this case with the thalo cancel each other out and create a rich dark. So what happens if we go with the thalo blue and a different type of red, like a very cool red? So I've nearly used all this up, but this is a quinacridone red. So this is very, very cool. You could do it with a lizard and crimson. So what happens if we then use our thalo blue with a cool red? And what we'll find is we get much the same. We'll get a lovely deep, rich purple. But it'll be hard to get the deep richness of the thalo and the red. It's always going to have like a purple bias towards it. However hard we try to kind of move away from that purple bias, if we stick more red in it, the quinacridone red, the cool red, then it's just going to become more purpley, but it won't necessarily get darker. And this brings us on to probably the final ones, and that's using all three primaries. So if I've got a mixture that's much too purpley, say, up here, this is kind of the ultramarine and the phthalo, and now I add a tiny, tiny touch of a yellow, like aureolin yellow here, that cancels out the purple because they're complementary, and this can start to give us a really deep dark. And this is when, now, we start to see um, the benefit of balancing all the primaries. So that's, that's just a warm uh, orangey red and ultramarine. A little bit too purpley. Drop in the tiniest touch of yellow and it just shifts the balance away from purple. It cancels it out and starts to give us a really rich, deep dark. As always, it takes a little bit of balancing. but just enough in there. And what it's doing is it's shifting it more towards the green color. There we go, that's the really deep, rich dark, which is comparable in darkness to that. And this is exactly the same mix over here, but just with adding a tiny bit of yellow, we get this really deep, rich dark. And what that effectively doing is canceling out the purple with the yellow and kind of bringing it together. It's exactly the same though, and this is where we get into balancing the primaries. If we were to say take the just the blue, doesn't really matter which blue, let's use a bit of ultramarine and that, and then we mix in the yellow, that's obviously going to give us a green. And it's a lovely rich dark green depending on what consistency we use, but if it's too greeny, our one option to balance out the greeniness and kind of cancel out the green and therefore make it darker. And we could probably use either red. Let's go with the cool one to illustrate the point. That's cancelling out the greeniness. I put a bit too much in there, but yeah, it's a bit too purple now. So then we have to stick in a bit more yellow to push it back towards kind of being a bit more greeny. And there we go. We start to get our more neutral dark. 
Uh, and this is it, we're constantly balancing, oh that needs a little bit more blue, needs a little bit more red. Do I want it to have a slightly greeny tinge or do I want it to have a slightly purple tinge or do I want it to be a bit more neutral? And we're constantly balancing the primaries in order to get those lovely rich darks. And then very finally, and probably one of the most important points here, is it's really important which yellow you use. I mentioned Oriolin yellow here. This is a lovely cool transparent yellow. It doesn't really matter if you use a cool or warm yellow, but what does matter is the transparency. And so I spoke a minute ago about using uh, potentially cadmium red and Prussian. So cadmium red is generally an opaque red, but when you're using it with a transparent blue, we don't run into many problems. So one opaque color as the red, with a dark blue, we're not gonna run into problems, but have a look at this. Let's take our really rich kind of dark color that's maybe got too much of a bias towards it and we wanna add a yellow to make it go that little bit darker. Look what happens if I add an opaque yellow instead. And there's two options here. One of them could be yellow ochre. So yellow ochre is a light color and it's got opacity to it. Whereas the Oriolin yellow will turn this to a lovely rich dark. Look what happens when we add the yellow ochre. Because it's opaque and because it's quite a light colour, it's very, very, it just won't go dark. However hard we try, the yellow ochre will keep lightening it and lightening it. Really, very hard to get a deep dark. And equally, if we go to lemon yellow, which is a very, very opaque yellow, I'm running out of space to put it here, let's pop it here. So this is a lemon yellow, very opaque. Let's have a look now. So it still makes a lovely color, but we can't get the deep, rich dark that we want. So if we're after a really rich dark and we're using the wrong yellow, you're gonna end up with kind of a sludgy mid-tone painting. So that's what I mean, it's really important. So we're gonna come in here with our ultramarine and our red, and we're gonna get it pretty dark. We know that we can get it fairly dark with that. But now look what happens if I add the lemon yellow, even just a tiny touch. Look what it does. It lightens it and that's because it's an opaque colour. The transparent colour and just a little bit of it will help to subdue it. And I'm constantly battling now to get rid of that lemon yellow in order to make the colour go darker. So again, and a touch of lemon yellow might make a nice colour but you don't need much and look how it goes to a nice colour but it's nowhere near as dark as that dark rich dark we want it to be. So for me, that's one of the most important things. An opaque red, great, with a dark, cool blue. That can work really well. The problems arise when we start putting an opaque yellow into our mixture, or we start to have more than one opaque color in a mixture. And this is why I generally use transparent colors. And again, this is a video I'm gonna make much more about later on. And now very finally, I just wanna talk about using how we use the paint. And for this particular um, example, I'm just gonna keep it simple and go back to using our cool blue and our orangey warm red, just to give this as an example. Um, and this is more, how do we actually create the dark on the page? So firstly, I tend to mix all my darks in this area here. So let that look at how rich and lovely that dark is. It's really lively, lovely dark. Like I said, if you wanna go that bit darker, tiny touch of Oriolin, great, or just balance it out a bit more. But this is kind of what I would call double cream consistency. So that's gonna give you a really deep, rich dark straight off. There's a little bit of water in it, so it will dry slightly lighter, but that's a lovely place to start. Look at that beautiful, deep, rich dark. You can see it gleaning off the light a little bit, which doesn't help, but. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's a little bit blue. So if I add tiny, tiny touches of red into it while it's still wet, they're gonna create a really lovely rich dark. That's one way, just straight off the bat, nice and rich dark. And then if we want to drop into that further still, then I would add almost neat paint. There's a tiny bit of water in my brush here, but I'm basically using the Marmite or butter consistency. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and check out one of my other videos where I talk about paint consistency. And this is almost dry brushwork, a little bit too blue, so sticking a bit more red. 
and that gives us a really deep rich dark and because that's got no water in it that's going to stay that dark as it dries. So that's that's the initial one is just using a high pigmentation not much water to create a deep dark. And the other way though is loading our wash and I've spoken about loading washes in other videos but we can start with a nice watery wash try and make it fairly dark in this case but because there's a lot of water in it it will dry lighter than I'm putting it down and that's the trick is that when you put a lot of water in a mix and the water soaks in and dries off the paint will look lighter so but we still want a deep rich dark so I'm starting with a lovely watery wash like this all linking together now as it dries I start to mix a heavier pigment so less water more pigment now we're into that was probably kind of uh, milky coffee consistency I'm now moving into single cream consistency and as it's drying I'm going to just keep loading the wash with more pigment. See how that, that, that has got less water in. So that will dry slightly lighter, uh, slightly darker still. Create really lovely, lovely rich darks and I do this a lot in my backgrounds to create sometimes you want a really flat lovely rich dark other times you want a bit of variation in there and this is how I tend to create variation in my darks. Um, so now we go now we go to our almost marmite consistency and just in a few places we might drop that in however works for you so we're loading the wash with continually heavier pigment and less water and so you'll get some really lovely rich dark areas like that that's got quite a, a sort of a blue tinge to it and that's okay that's no bad thing necessarily but there's a bias towards blue whereas if I start mixing more red in it the red is going to start cancelling out some of that blue and give us that really rich dark. The point here is there's no rigidness to this it's no it's not a wrong thing that the wash I initially started with is blue it's just being conscious of why it's too blue and knowing that if I simply balance that out with more red great and the more red I add into it to a point the darker it's going to push it the less water I add to a to a point the darker it's going to dry so I hope that makes sense so just to recap we've got our shortest trip to dark using black we can always tint our black once we start using it too much in a painting we can create very grey paintings not necessarily a bad thing but again we need to be conscious of what we're doing with the paint Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine are lovely, lovely, neutral, rich darks when you balance them well, especially with less water. The more water we add, we start to drift into it, either having a blue bias or an orange bias or just being a very neutral grey, which we can then further tint with other primaries, but a lovely kind of classic way to create lovely rich darks. I find it a little bit too grey and muddy for my own taste, so that's why I move towards uh, a deep, dark, cool blue, with a red this has dried slightly lighter than I would like but that's because I wasn't too focused on the paint consistency the warm orangey red cancelling out the cool dark blue creating lovely rich rich deep darks we've got um, I use pyrrole and thalo and like I said you could do Prussian or indigo and cadmium and vermilion as your reds Prussian and cadmium being a really rich pretty much black consistency probably even blacker and darker than thalo and pyrrole so that's something to look out for as soon as we start using a cool red or a warm blue the bias tends to shift to being too purpley to make a really rich neutral dark and it won't quite go that dark but the tiniest touch of the transparent yellows and we can cancel out the purpleness and get this if we use opaque yellows we get lovely colours but we won't be able to get deep rich darks and that when we end up with kind of sludgy mid-tone paintings um, sludgy is the wrong word but paintings that don't have enough contrast or enough oomph to them because our darks haven't been able to go dark enough and then there's simply the way that we use the paint very strong consistency will remain dark the more water is in the mix the lighter it will dry compared to how it looks wet and you can get straight on there with the thick paint or you can load in a lovely kind of fresh watery wash and then load in stronger and strong, stronger pigment of dark as you go and that's it.
So that's it guys, I hope you found that useful. If so, please do consider subscribing, it really helps the channel. And I've got loads more content to come, hit the bell to be notified of when it does. And also a like lets me know what sort of content you guys are enjoying, what you want to see more of. You can also find me over on Patreon for lots of exclusive content and over on social media too. All links are in the description. Thanks for watching, happy painting and I will see you in the next video.